The following program contains reenactments of actual events and is not a news broadcast or a news documentary. In 1961, Roger Maris broke Babe Ruth's legendary home run record. But little did two teenage sweethearts know that that single swing of the bat would change their lives forever. Join us for the story behind the story. We all remember the famous news events, front page stories that grip the nation's attention and are firmly etched in our memories. But behind the headlines, there are hidden stories with surprising, intriguing twists that have until now remained untold. We'll bring you stories of people, places, and events we've all heard about, but we've never heard the story behind the story. Next, the story behind the story of Roger Maris's record-breaking 61st home run. Yankee Stadium. It was the final game of the season in 1961. The New York Yankees faced the Boston Red Sox, and Roger Maris, the brooding and distant Yankee right fielder, was poised to hit one more home run and break Babe Ruth's all-time record of 60 home runs in a single season. That one swing would change baseball history. It would also change the life of an unknown Brooklyn teenager. Sal Durante was just out of high school and working as a delivery boy to help support his family. In an extraordinary series of circumstances, the home run ball that Roger Maris hit that fall afternoon became Sal's passport to a new life. The story behind this sports story is a love story. Ten months before that fateful ball game, Sal met 16-year-old Rosemary Calabrese. They fell in love. Sal, I want you to meet Rosemary. Rose, this is Sal, Johnny's cousin we were telling you about. It's nice to meet you. Hi. So you guys want to sit down? Do you want to go for a walk or something? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for a walk. Yeah, let's go for a let's walk. Let's go for a walk. Heard a lot about you. I hope it was good stuff. Yeah, it was. It was love at first sight. Yeah, let's go. The first time I met Sal, I knew that he was the man I was going to marry. The young lovers agreed on everything, except baseball. I've never heard of Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle. In my house, we were all Dodger fans, so I didn't hear anything about the Yankees. My father thought that anyone living in Brooklyn should be Dodger fans. And when Sal came here and he found out he was a Yankee fan, and he didn't think too much of Sal at the time. Rose's parents didn't want Sal and Rose to get married because the young couple had no money. And on top of that, Sal was a diehard Yankee fan. As Roger Maris closed in on Ruth's record, he faced enormous pressure from reporters hounding him daily, and his patience wore thin. The home run chase was becoming a nightmare. You come out in the field and all day you're just all your time before the ball game is spent with the photographers and after the ball game it's the writers and uh, before the game it's the writers and between the two of them, uh, it was uh, just a real pleasure to get out there and play the game. On September 26th, Roger Maris tied Babe Ruth's astounding record. Whether Maris could hit number 61 all came down to the last game of the season. In Sacramento, restaurateur Sam Gordon offered a $5,000 reward for the ball that broke Ruth's record. On October 1st, we were talking about going to the Yankee game because it was the last game of the season, until I realized I didn't have the money. So Rosemary uh, said, I have money, let's go. And that's how we decided to go to Yankee Stadium. Well, I've always wanted to catch a baseball during the game or practice, just to catch a ball. That was my, my dream growing up. On the day of the game, the right field bleachers were packed, and Sal and his friends could not find four seats together. So Rose had to sit one row behind the others. In his first at-bat, Maris failed a home run. He made an out. At this moment, Sal made a fateful decision. Rosemarie was by herself with two strangers. 
So I decided, Ro, you sit with my cousin. This way you have somebody to talk to. I know the game. I'll sit back here by myself. You enjoying the game, Johnny? Yeah. Which well, you know there was excitement there. I mean, everybody was prepared. Everybody was ready. Uh, the fourth inning, Roger got up. We got a handful of people sitting out in left field, but in right field, and it is bombed out there. And they're standing up. In Maris's second at bat, pitcher Tracy Stallard threw two balls. Yankee fans worried that Stallard would intentionally walk Maris to avoid going down in history as the man who gave up the record-breaking home run. Then came Stallard's third pitch. Here's the windup. Fastball hit deep to right. Way back there. As soon as he hit that ball, I knew it was over my head. I reached up as high as I could, and the ball landed in the palm, and it just stood there like glue. Nobody was getting that ball out of my hand. Nobody. And I was swinging that arm around so as nobody would grab it. Because later on I found out that they were saying I took the ball out of one of the kids' hands, out of a sweater. People were there with baseballs saying that was the one. I don't know why, but I feel that that ball was meant for me to catch. I really do. After Maris hit his record-breaking home run and circled the bases, he reluctantly came out and acknowledged the cheers of the crowd. Back in the right field bleachers, it was still pandemonium. And everyone started screaming and coming all around him, and the security guys came and they took him downstairs. And I had no idea where Sal was, and I was sitting there not knowing what was going on. Two security guards picked me up and they uh, took me through the bullpen down under the stadium into a runway. And that's where I met Roger. Hey, kid. Nice to meet you. It's not in the meet you, Mr. Maris. Yeah, it felt fantastic. I mean, to meet the guy that hit the ball. It was really great. He was the first Yankee I ever met. It was a big thrill for me. It really was. But Mr. Maris, this belongs to you. I mean, you hit it out the ballpark. I want to give it back to you. Well, kid, don't be crazy. That ball's worth a lot of money to you. I got plenty of baseballs at home. Keep it and make some money. Uh, yes, the press is waiting, so we better go, huh? I thought he was great. He was a real gentleman. As far as I'm concerned, he is my hero now. Sam Gordon flew us out to Sacramento to meet Roger and do the whole publicity stunt, you know. Being that we had that money, my father felt that we had a good start. At that time, that was a lot of money, 28 years ago. And so I think that's what helped to persuade him to let us get married. On October 29th, 1961, Sal and Rose finally got married. Roger Maris died in 1985. The ball that he hit and Sal caught is now in baseball's Hall of Fame. Ironically, Maris himself was never voted into the Hall of Fame. Sal and Rose still live in Brooklyn. They have three grown children and Sal drives a school bus. Now, 28 years later, Sal and Rose both believe that their chance for happiness began in this stadium when Sal reached up from the crowd and held on to that fateful ball. That was a dream come true. When he caught that ball and we had that money to do what we wanted to set up our home and start our family. That was a dream come true. Thank you for joining us tonight. And be with us next time for another edition of the story behind the story.